Hey coach, how's it going? My name is Ben Neighbors and I'm the founder of Soccer Entrepreneur. And if you're watching this video, it's probably telling me that you're looking to bring on an assistant coach with your soccer academy. And I want to be very clear before I start talking about how to do this. This is for you if you are a private soccer trainer. So if you are training players privately, um, maybe you have camps, clinics, however you have your business set up. Um, this is specific for you if you're looking to bring someone else on to help and be an assistant for your academy. This is not for, uh, and I always want to be clear in my videos, this is not for you if you have a club uh, looking to bring on a different club coach. Um, that's not what this is about. Um, so I just want to make sure that's very clear. And after you watch this video, make sure and comment below. I want to answer any of your questions. So let's just dig straight into this. So if you're going to bring on an assistant coach, I have a criteria that is extremely important that I talk about because if you don't do this, you're going to be bringing on the wrong people and you're going to be bringing people on when you don't need to. So the first thing that I look for uh, when I bring anybody on is I have to make sure that Everything that's set up within my business is something that I can easily teach someone. And I look at this almost as like the Subway model. At Subway, anybody can work there. Anybody can come in and start working immediately because there's an easy system that people can follow. And I feel like if you don't have a system that someone else can follow, then you're always going to be constantly worried about what they're doing. And they're never going to be doing anything the same way you are. So you have to come up with a system. This is why I have that book called The Startup Soccer Academy. It talks very detailed about setting everything up. This way, if you do bring someone else on, it's easy. It's not a headache. And I know better than everybody. Uh, I've hired a ton of people in the past. Um, at one point, I had up to 10 trainers. And my, so, my selection process during that period was terrible. Um, I was a really bad uh, person that's selecting uh, employees to work for me because I didn't really have this criteria set up and I had to learn the hard way. But once I learned, everything became a lot easier when I started to hire other trainers. So when I talk about setting up a system, this means that not only are all of your sessions already booked, like everybody's coming on time, people are paying online, everything is set up perfectly for you and you're not able to scale that unless that's already set up. And you can't scale that and have another trainer come on to what you're doing unless that is already set up for yourself. And this is why I always tell everybody, never bring anybody on into what you're doing until you absolutely have to. So if you are training like two or three people right now and you feel like you can expand quickly, I would not bring anybody else on until you know that you literally have no time to work with anybody else. And there's a lot of reasons why I would tell you that, but my biggest reason is I want you to prove the concept first that what you're doing is working. Every month your revenue is going up and you know that there's gonna be some point where you're not able to train everybody anymore where you have to bring someone else on. And at that point, that's when you wanna do it. I'm not a big fan of going into partnerships or starting uh, training with somebody else at the beginning uh, because everybody has a different mentality. Not everybody's going to be the same when, when you talk about your mission and what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Uh, I think it's smarter to start on your own and only bring somebody else on when you know you absolutely have to. And when you have to, it's going to make more sense than when you think you need to. Um, and, and so that's kind of the first thing that I want to talk about is I've made a lot of bad decisions in the past bringing people on when I didn't need to uh, because I thought I had something that was scalable and it wasn't. Um, and until I figured that out, um, I had to learn the hard way. And I wouldn't want you to learn the hard way. I'd rather you do it the smart way, which is what I'm trying to show you here. Now the second thing that I would do when you bring somebody on is I would make sure that they fit all of your criteria. And it, this really goes back to what type of training program you offer and who you're looking for to help out. Because one person who you bring on, they will dictate your reputation. If they are a bad person, if they are ripping you off, if they are not a good trainer, if they're not an experienced trainer. I mean, I could go down the list of negative qualities that some people have. 
Um, but you need to have a set criteria of what you expect and it needs to be drawn out in a contract. You need to have everything set up to where whoever you bring on, they know all of, all of their responsibilities. They're not just going to be there just doing the training. You might want them to do a lot of other stuff outside of that. But everything needs to be drawn out and you need to have a set criteria of what you expect and who you want to bring on. If you don't do that, you're just going to be blindly bringing people on that may really destroy your, your company's reputation. And trust me, I've brought on some people in the past who are not the best fit. Um, and I should have done a better job of kind of screening them, asking them certain questions, and making sure that they're the right fit to work with me. And that's the thing, you're the person who is, has already worked so hard to put together your own academy. Um, the last thing you wanna do is bring on a rotten seed, someone who's going to look to diminish what you started, that maybe they're gonna look to take your idea and, and do it somewhere else. Um, you wanna bring on the right people. And like I said at the beginning, you only wanna bring that person on when you know it's time to do it. If you try to do this too quick, you're gonna fail just like how I did, and you're gonna ultimately bring on people who don't deserve to work for you. So that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions about that, uh, make sure to drop me a comment below. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna stay updated with all of our newest videos. Uh, right now, we are going to be filming at least two videos every week. Um, so if you have any questions, drop me a comment. Uh, this way I can see what that is and I'll probably make a, a future video based on what you ask me. And if you're looking to start your soccer academy and maybe you have the passion to help players in a private training environment uh, the same way I did, uh, then I want you to go check out my book. It's called The Startup Soccer Academy. There's going to be a link below this video where you can see a, a free preview of what is inside the book. I know that is the best resource online right now for people who are looking to start their own soccer academy. So if you're a trainer that wants to turn your passion into profits and you want to have your own business, I highly recommend checking that book out um, as soon as possible. Uh, so just go on the link below this video. You can check that out there and I'll see you next time.